A huge thank you to Home Glow for being the sponsor of today's video. picture of you. You're at the doctor's in the doctor bed and this is your hair and your head and this is your arm and there's where your baby is and that's your legs. Aww. This is the like doctor bed then this is where you roll it. There's the lines. But the doctor is somewhere else. I love it. You should draw Dr. Katie on there. No. <laughs> okay everybody. The day has finally come. Here's our little peanut. Can you say hi? <laughs> Here she is. You just looking around? You are so sweet. So I know I promised y'all a birth story and you're gonna hear it. Oh my gosh, you guys, it has been so hard to stay positive during these last few weeks of pregnancy and i've kind of been debating back and forth about making this video because i think the last thing that i want to do is to scare new moms or young marrieds into not wanting to have kids because not every birth story is super positive and that unfortunately was kind of the case for us this time around so i think i had this idea that because this was my fourth pregnancy fourth delivery all of that that somehow you know i think people usually are like oh this one's just gonna slide right out <laughs> which is kind of a gross picture i really was thinking like okay you know I, my body has been through this before and this should be easy this time and unfortunately that wasn't the case on any level my morning sickness this time was just like brutal my energy had plummeted there was a golden period there in the middle for a little bit during like second trimester but then third trimester was just miserable i had really bad acid reflux so much that i had to get on prescription medicine it's never been that bad before but i truly could not eat anything without it completely keeping me up all night oh my gosh horrible insomnia and again i i don't want to deter anybody from getting pregnant or starting a family because truly it has been the best thing that has ever happened to us it is my favorite season of life so far and that's why even though all of my pregnancies have been pretty difficult, whenever people ask me like, would you do it again? The answer is always yes, always yes. Honestly, if we had any more room in our car, I might even do it again, <laughs> but we don't. And I think that we are probably done trying to have kids in the future. But you know, if one comes through, you guys probably know from my last video that we had so many false labors or prodromal prodromal there, there's a word for it labors like where my body truly told me that i think i thought i was going into labor a couple times this has never happened with any of my other pregnancies Ooh, you okay and it led to a lot of excited anticipation followed by like just disappointment honestly i was saying that for the last few weeks i felt like i had emotional whiplash like i would be like oh my gosh it's happening and then just feel so defeated afterwards Meanwhile, going through a ton of pain and discomfort because y'all, I got huge this time. You guys might not have been able to really see it in the videos very well, but Josh would see my stomach and he was like shocked at how big it had gotten. I was so uncomfortable. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna skip to the date that things started. But before we do that, I wanna say a huge thank you to today's sponsor. These guys have blessed me so much in helping with keeping our house clean while i'm in this newborn phase so let me tell you a little bit more about them here so i'm getting home here right after these guys came and cleaned our house and y'all i cannot tell you how nice it feels to have this taken off of our plate i know that many of you suggest
suggested that we not do this, but we've actually had a ton of company ever since our sweet Lily was born. And so it feels nice to be able to bring people into a clean home, not just like my clean, but like actually clean. <laughs> For those of you who are new to Homeaglow, it's a top rated home service platform that's dedicated to making your space clean and tidy. Their online booking capabilities allow you to instantly schedule a cleaner in your area for a special occasion, party, or regularly to help take something off of your plate. All cleaners on Homeaglow pass a rigorous certification process and maintain a 4.8 star average platform rating. Even better, it's a fantastic way to support cleaners in your community. 100% of cleaning fees and tips go directly to your cleaner. To schedule a cleaning, you simply go to Homeaglow's website to choose the day or time that you're looking for and the duration of your cleaning, and you'll see all available cleaners. Schedule as quickly as this week or get something on the calendar for next month to check it off of your to-do list early. You can browse photos and reviews of background checked cleaners before choosing the right cleaner for you. You can also sign up for their Forever Clean membership, which saves you $30 an hour on all future cleanings. Book unlimited cleaning starting at $19 an hour backed by Homeaglow's happiness guarantee. Take note that their services are only available in the U.S. I use this for an after baby clean and I could not be happier. The booking process was easy and our cleaner was very kind. It was so easy to select a trusted cleaner based on their reviews and experience making me feel safe with Homeaglow. So take home cleaning off your plate by using Homeaglow. Head to homeaglow.com slash Kristen Hoffman or scan the QR code to get your first three Three hours of cleaning for only $19. Well, hello everybody. Quick update, I had my appointment yesterday with my doctor, Katie. I went in there, she told me that things are starting to look like they're getting ready. And so she went in and like stripped my membranes, which was traumatic, but you know, it's all part of it. She told me to come home and pump. And so I've been pumping today, hoping that it induces labor. We'll see. I'm just really hoping that it'll happen in the next 24 hours. So it was Wednesday, July 3rd. My due date was on July 4th. I don't know why, I just really felt like it was going to happen on this day. So Josh went into work into Omaha, which is about 35 minutes from here. And I told him, I was like, you better keep your phone on, like keep it on high because if I call you, I need you to come immediately. So I was just kind of doing some finishing touches around the house. And finally I laid down around like one o'clock and at one o'clock, my contractions went from intense to painful and intense. Okay, so I'm moving around the house, trying to get some stuff done around here before things happen, but my contractions are coming about every four minutes right now. But I looked it up online and it just continues for two hours, I think that's when I'm supposed to go into the hospital. So Josh is actually not here right now. He's in Omaha working, but I think he's supposed to be home in about two hours. So I'm just gonna keep tracking these and let the girls sleep. It's like nap time. Oh, yeah. God. By the way, I have a stupid cold and I pulled a muscle in my abdomen last night from coughing so hard. Y'all, only me, only me. He did wind up leaving work, came home, and these contractions, they even went down to like two minutes and they continued and went through the two hours. And so we called up family members to take the girls and we went and we met them at the hospital. Hello. What's We're up guys? Mommy's having a baby. <laughs> I just got off the phone a little bit ago with my doctor and I kind of told her what was going in, going on and she told me to go in. <laughs> All right, Wheezy. Wheezy. Let's hope the baby's not born with that cough. I know. Anyway, are you guys excited? Yeah. What are you most excited about? Um, the baby coming. The baby just excited. Coming. For her to be here. Yeah. So we just got to the hospital. My stepmom's gonna come pick up the kids and the dog. And then Josh and I are gonna go in. Yep. I'm excited. So we met up with my stepmom. We brought our dog, we brought the bags, we brought the car seat, all that good stuff. And we switched off all of the kids and the dog with them. And Josh and I walked ourselves up into the labor and delivery area. We told them that I was having these contractions. They asked if my water had broken and my water had not broken. Usually I use that as my indicator as like, oh, it's time to go in now. But living so far away from the hospital, I was nervous that 
I just didn't want to have a baby in the car, <laughs> you know? So I wound up just going in when I thought I should. So they took me upstairs and I got put over into triage, not labor and delivery because my water hadn't broken. I'm like having these tough contractions and they measured my cervix. If you guys are not familiar, one is basically closed. 10 is that the baby is going to be here right now. They went and measured my cervix and I was measuring at a one which basically means the baby is not coming kind of thing. They gave me the option. They're like, well, you know, it seems like your contractions are really intense for being at a one. Like they, it just seemed kind of confusing. I was like, yeah, dude, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so they were like, well, we can't admit you until you're about three or four centimeters dilated if your water isn't broken. And so you can either choose to be induced or you can sit here in this tiny junky triage it was like basically a glorified waiting room or you can go home. So we called my friend Katie, who is also my OBGYN. And she was like, no, I wouldn't go back all the way home. Maybe you can go over to your parents' house or something since they live in town. So we did, we went over to my parents, which is where my kids were. And I just had this feeling of not shame, but I honestly felt like the boy who cried wolf. You know, I was like, man, so many times we have come to Omaha and I have packed all of my bags Twice we had brought our dog into town thinking that it was happening and our kids and everything. Packed bags for them, all that. But I had never gone into the hospital if I wasn't having a baby. And so I was just really confused by this whole thing. So I went home and continued to labor at my parents' house. We had dinner, watched a movie, like hung out in the living room, all this kind of stuff. And I'm like full on having extreme contractions just hanging out in the living room but I don't want to say anything and I don't want to go into the hospital again because I feel like an idiot, honestly. I was just like, I can't believe we did all that and I'm at a one. Like, that's not going anywhere. So I stayed up pretty late that night just like hanging out with family. I didn't even want to go to bed because my contractions were so painful. I knew that I wasn't going to be able to sleep. So Josh went down at about 11. I went to bed about 1230 and when I went to bed, my contractions kicked in and started happening like two minutes apart. These contractions were so painful. Let me describe this, okay? Before this, I had given birth three times. The first two times I had gotten an epidural, it did not work. If you guys know anything about epidurals, they have to get the needle exactly in the middle of your spine. Otherwise, it won't work on one side of your body. So the first time I didn't work on my right side and the second time I didn't work on my left side. And so I would be completely numb and my other side was going through like completely unmedicated, full on labor pains, right? All the way up until almost when I delivered for both of them. So I know what those labor pains felt like and that's exactly what these felt like. They didn't feel like starting labor pains. They felt like end of labor, you are almost giving birth pains. So I am barely breathing through these things. I'm crying into my pillow. Like I am in so much pain. And, but for some reason, I just had this dumb idea in my mind. Like, I don't want to go wake up Josh. He was sleeping on the couch right outside of the guest room where I was because I didn't want to wake him up every five seconds with my contractions. I was like, I don't want to go out and wake him up. Not that Josh would ever make me feel this way, but I just didn't want to be the boy who cried wolf. I didn't want to be a bother again and make everybody drive to the hospital in the middle of the night just to get turned away. So... I decided to forget all that and wake him up anyway. So I did and he was like groggy and he was like, are you sure you should call Katie? I was like, I think we just need to go in. I'm like in desperate pain right now. Basically I was like, if I'm not having the baby right now, like something is wrong. We drove into the hospital and at this point, my contractions were so bad. I was holding Josh's hand. I basically broke his hand all the way to the hospital because I was holding it so hard. And I told him, I joked on the way in, I was like, oh my gosh, if they tell me I'm a one again, I'm gonna kill somebody. <laughs> like I was in so much pain. So we go on up, again, they ask me if my water's broken, hasn't broken, so they send me right back on over to triage where I was before. When we're there, this might be a TMI, so I'm just gonna like let y'all know. I was like writhing in pain. I was, I was really, really struggling. And I had the sweetest nurse. I don't know if she was like a nurse or a PA, but the, the person who was taking care of me, she went to check my cervix and 
it was so far up still that she couldn't even reach it with her hand. So she had to get a male doctor, whatever, PA nurse, to come in and try to reach my cervix with his giant fingers. <laughs> because his hands were bigger, he was able to reach my cervix. When he checked my cervix, y'all, I was at a one. I have like literally never been so defeated in my life. They told me that there was nothing that they could do about it. And basically I would have to sit in triage until I reached a three. So the staff, they were kind of like looking at me and they noticed that she was really big. And they said that sometimes when they are really big babies, their heads will get like kinked off to the side and that there's not the pressure on the top of their head to push down the cervix to open it. And so that's what they were thinking is that she was like kinked like this. So I'm getting nervous thinking, do I need to have a C-section? Like what's going on? Like why is she not dropping down at all? And basically I sat in that triage for, oh, she fell asleep. Oh no, you're not. See, I'm not asleep. <laughs> so I sat in that triage from like one something in the morning until five. For four hours, I had these excruciating labor pains. Okay, and let me tell y'all that this is not how it happens every time. I have had three labors that have been very positive, very good. This is my only one that has been like this. They kept checking me, I would not progress past a one. And then finally, at about five o'clock in the morning, they, checked me and I had gone to a three. And so that was enough to send me over into labor and delivery where I could get an epidural. And y'all, I'm not gonna lie, I fully admire all these like natural mamas. I've had all natural except for an epidural for all of my kids. But y'all, I'm not gonna lie, I, I went with the epidural. <laughs> And I know many of you have too. <laughs> I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you did yours natural or if you had an epidural. I'd be very interested to know like kind of what the ratio is. Thank God it worked like right off the bat. My body finally started to calm down a little bit. Since my water still hadn't broken, they asked me if I wanted to break it and they said we could do it and she would probably come pretty quickly. But by this time, y'all, we were so tired. We had been up like 24 hours at this point and I, my body was so exhausted from all of the painful and strong contractions that I've been having all day. I was desperate for sleep. And not only do I not really love intervention as far as like breaking your water, like I know that if they would have done it that she would have come and then all of a sudden I would have had a baby on my chest for the next two hours after that and I was just like at that point I just wanted to sleep more than I wanted the baby to get here. And so we were able to sleep from about like 5.30, I don't know, until maybe eight in the morning. And I can't even tell you that two and a half hours, I think Josh slept till nine, but like that two, three hours that we had of sleep was, it felt like a gift from God. It was so desperately needed. So I felt, I woke up feeling like a new person. The nurses came in and they were like, hey, we don't know what's going on but your contractions have actually significantly slowed down. So they were coming like every two minutes when I was in triage, like boom, just like right on top of each other. Then once I got hooked up to the epidural, they were just like, oh, I guess we're just gonna go away. And so I was again, feeling really defeated. So they asked like, are you sure you don't want Pitocin? I didn't want Pitocin. I just decided to labor for a little bit longer. It went on, my water never broke. And finally my friend Katie came in and she was like, hey, I don't know what's going on, but if we break your water, it will get your contractions going again and we can get your little girl out. And so at that point, like I said, I had finally rested and I was like, fine, that sounds whatever, like just do it. And so she broke my water, but I was still at like a three and my contractions weren't really picking up all that much. Finally, they were like, we would really highly recommend Pitocin at this point. You've been in labor for so long. You've been in like so much pain. Your body has gone through, through so much. Let's just check you one more time. So they checked me and within a very short amount of time, I went from being a three to a 10, like she was right there. And so they checked me, they're like, oh my gosh, you're not gonna need Pitocin or anything to move this forward. She's coming right now. 
right. A little bit of an update. Uh, we are here. I'm trying to get good angles here for everybody's sake. Is there a good angle? All or right. Let work? me see. So we are currently about to have this baby. Kristen is fully... I'm like transitioning, so that's why I'm shaking so Transitioning, bad. so she's all shaky, but... It's not because she's cold or neglected, it's because she's about to have a baby. So we're super excited. Mm -hmm. Baby girl's gonna be here any minute. I'll try to keep you guys updated. <laughs> all the staff came into the room. They all did their thing. Josh was with me. Thankfully, I have not had to push super long with any of our girls. And her arrival was extremely sweet. Like it really was good. But what I hadn't realized because I had the epidural is that because she was so big and because my cervix had to expand so quickly, I tore pretty badly. And so I had to get stitches and all of that kind of stuff, which has been kind of no fun over this last week. But I didn't care because I finally had her on my chest. We got to do, oh my gosh, she must be dreaming. She's like smiling. Um, we got to do like our skin to skin time, like the little sacred hour and they weighed her. She weighed, eight pounds 15 ounces so one ounce less than a nine pound baby which is huge all the rest of my girls have been like seven pounds and so even when they pulled her out they're like whoa this baby's big it is so funny even in the picture she's got like full-on double chin so chunky you were so chunky because i know you guys will ask she was 21 inches long i believe I don't know, I'm terrible about remembering this stuff about my kids. And so yeah, that is how Lily came into this world and we are just so happy that she's here. And for those of you who are interested in like the full name that we chose, we wound up choosing Lily Anna. Anna is my middle name and it's also the name of three of my great grandmothers. So it is a family name. The family is all super happy about it. It's nice to be able to pass that along and then Lily means purity. And obviously it goes along with our other girls names, Rosie, Ruby, Ivy, and now Lily. So I know she's your sister, but she's all of our sisters. Oh, yes. <laughs> Chubby daddy. Hey. Chubby chubby. What? <laughs> the cute little baby She's officially a week old as of like right now. Since she's been home, she has been the easiest baby and I have been so blessed. My mother-in-law has come and stayed with us. She actually just left yesterday and she was wonderful. She helped with dishes and laundry and diapers and all of that good stuff. We've had a couple of friends and family members bring over some meals, which has just been like the greatest blessing, y'all. I know I kind of talked about this in my baby clothes organization video, but I just, I cannot emphasize enough how much that is appreciated as a new mom, just like taking those things off of my plate. And I have to say that after having four kids, I really come to prioritize the healing process and like just being okay with letting go. Like I've been doing some stuff around here, but I'm trying to be better this time around about letting other people help me, about trying to stay on the couch and resting, like all of that good stuff. So that's kind of what I've been doing. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying the videos that I've been putting out. I've actually made a few videos ahead of time to go live as I'm taking my like maternity leave, if you wanna call it that. So I'm planning on taking about three weeks without making any content creation or anything like that before I start to like kind of ease back into things here so even today like i'm planning on filming this video but i'm not going to edit it for maybe a couple weeks but i just wanted you guys to be able to see her while she's still just itty bitty because you know how they just grow so fast like she will only be this tiny for a second before it's gone i've honestly spent more time with her than any of my other girls just like looking at her and being happy, but also kind of sad that this is probably the last time that we're gonna be going through this. I set her down so you guys could get a little bit better look, but here is Miss Lily. She is so sweet, aren't you? 
aren't you? So you guys can see here, she's got kind of dark hair. I will say that it looks darker sometimes and then other times in the light, it almost looks blonde. So it makes me think that she's probably going to look a lot like Ruby. I'll show you guys a little comparison here, but she looks so much like Ruby when she was little. So cute and a lot like me when I was born. <laughs> but we have just been in love with her, loving these little 90s jammies. Anyway, I just think she is so stinking cute. You're so cute. You're so cute. We are so elated that she's here. She seriously has been so easy. She's been sleeping for like five hour stretches at night almost all week. So I'm not banking on this continuing, but I have really appreciated the sleep. Honestly, when I was pregnant, I was waking up like every hour, hour and a half to go to the bathroom because she put so much pressure on my bladder. And now like I sleep through the night. It's so nice. <laughs> anyway, everybody, well, I'm not going to take any more time to do this today. I'm going to get back to resting, but thank you so much for joining us here today. I think that four girls is probably enough for us, but I'm interested to know how many kids do you have? Do you have all boys? Do you have all girls? Do you have a mix? I would love to know. So let me know in the comments below. All right, y'all. Well, we will see you next time. Bye. My sister and I don't know. And I don't want to. <laughs> Girls are sure precious. You are so sweet. Are you liking the story?